Welcome everyone to Boost Pickup. I am your host, Vaudible. Very excited to bring you guys the episode number do, or duo, deuce, whatever it is, numbers. I can't really speak other languages other than English. But what is important is what we have on the docket for today. Before we bring in our special guests, we have today's topics from Maine with Love. That's a one-on-one -on -one interview with the one and only Sean Stackhouse, which is Stacks, RL Esports Update, the off-season specials the community contributions, and then me saying goodbye and thank you for tuning in. So without further ado, after my little bit of a botch intro, let's bring in the one and only Stax man himself. How are you doing today, sir? And it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, thanks for having me on here, Vod. It is uh, great to be here. I'm doing fantastic, and I love that you have successfully catfished everybody showing a picture of me from like a year ago <laughs> when I actually had like, you know, a full little uh, majestic yeah. beard and now it's just my ugly mug uh, right next to it. It's not it's not too ugly. Don't don't discredit yourself that much. But uh, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, recently, I saw there was an article actually posted getting a little bit of a dive into uh, how you started off with broadcasting and how you got into commentary after that. But before all that, how you were talking about in that article, uh, I wanted to bring up things of the past in high school. You mentioned that you were all about commentating in games, and that kind of is what led you to being a caster in general. Is that what kind of spurred your passion for broadcasting in general? Yeah, I mean, th this goes back to playing like Madden 97, you know, back on the PS1, you just, uh, you'd I'd play games and pretend I was doing commentary, uh, all like the soccer games on the N64, which had very capable commentary. True. And, uh, but it wasn't you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the commentary for those games was here. Mine was at that time probably <laughs> way down here. But uh, no, it was uh, just playing games like that. I mean, I would even commentate like – uh, if I was playing Mario or something, it's almost like I was pretending to host a show or something. Just, just something to do and, uh, you know, talk to myself because we all got to have somebody who understands us. And in that case, the only person who really does is yours truly. So uh, just, you know, a lot of stuff like that. And when my high school had a TV station, it's like, yeah, what the heck? Why not? Awesome. So you went from commentating Madden and Mario and then going into broadcasting in high school. Uh, where? So for those who don't know uh, the origin of Stax, before he had the name Stax, he used to go by, I don't know the exact number it was, but it was Sea Dogs fan. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the origins of that name. Did that start with how you did high school like commentary? Was it afterwards? How did that all come about? So that started because uh, we have a double A baseball team up here called the Portland Sea Dogs. And uh, I had signed up on a local sports forum with the name Sea Dogs fan and was surprised as all heck to see that nobody else had taken that name. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, what? why not? I'll just go with it. And just decided to stick with it. And anytime that name was taken on a side, I just throw the numbers in and, you know, it's just. That was my little name. It was my persona for a little while. And then when I got into esports, you know, I realized kind of early on that, like, if I want to do this and, like, make a name for myself, Sea Dogs fan is going to sound really stupid on a broadcast. So, <laughs> nah, uh, nah. so that's why I had to come up with something else. And, you know, Stacks just kind of felt right, even though there are, like, 15 other Stacks in esports. I mean, true, but none of them are the stacks that is a caster for the rival series who's been doing announcing for multiple different sports up in Maine. How did uh, all that announcing start? Was it just with the the broadcasting for high school? Did you just do some like radio work there or where what was kind of like the, the steps you took to get to announcing in general? Uh, when I was in college, I got asked by a local high school baseball coach, hey, you want to do PA announcing for our team? And I'd never done it before. So uh, I initially told him no and got him in touch with uh, a friend of mine that did do those games. And then, you know, after a few months, I sent him a message again, like, hey, uh, remember that message you sent about announcing? <laughs> like, do you still need somebody? And he's like, yeah been waiting for you to actually grow up and say yes. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do it. 
And so I ended up doing it. It just it, it started with taking like a, a a portable radio and putting a CD in and just hooking that up to the sound system and playing that. And then over time evolved and got some music programs and all that and it kind of turned into almost like a DJ at games. And uh, it just kind of snowballed from there. One gig led to another. You, you know the right person. They hook you up with another gig. You meet the right person there. And then it ended up at UMaine. Awesome. So how did you kind of hone those skills and especially for announcing? It's a lot different than esports commentary. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's very different because, you know, you're not doing play-by-play when you're doing uh, – when you're a PA announcer, you're just yeah. introducing lineups, announcing who's who's scored in basketball games and all that. And you know, there's a really helpful group on Facebook that's just public address announcers. And you know, if you if anytime anybody's asked to do something for the first time, whether it's field hockey, lacrosse, whatever, volleyball, you, know, you can usually go on there, ask, "Hey, I've been asked to do this. I've never done it before. <laughs> what do I do?" and like 20 people come in like, oh, yeah, I do this, this, and this for D1 schools. Like, you just announce that. You announce this other thing. And, and you know, don't worry. You're probably going to get lineups five minutes before if it's volleyball. And good luck. You're like, okay, cool. So uh, it was a lot of that. You Sometimes you post a clip and you get some peer review and just <laughs> stuff like that. And yeah. it's a lot better than posting something on Reddit and asking them for advice. Gotcha. So do you prefer kind of the method of feedback that you have for PA announcing compared to esports commentary? <laughs> actually, no, I actually really prefer the method of feedback we have for esports commentary because usually it goes through Gilly over at Psyonix. And, and since they brought her on, I mean, it's I think everybody would go to bat for her and just say oh, yeah. it's been outstanding. So, uh, no, I, I definitely love that aspect of it. Um, but uh I, I would definitely take uh, peer feedback over public feedback in a lot yep. of cases, yes. <laughs> so that is a, an interesting point to bring up, the, the public eye aspect of it. Did you have all these articles and interviews uh, done when you were a PA announcer, or is that like a new thing that you've kind of experienced that has been in the world of esports for you? Oh, no, not at all. And, and actually, funny thing about the uh, the article that was just written for the local paper here – that uh, that particular writer, he's been around for forever, and he does a phenomenal job. Uh, about, I don't know, eight or ten years ago, I was doing a, uh, a baseball tournament, actually similar to the one I'll be doing this weekend, and, like, local coverage had kind of waned on that tournament, so it was... So me being young and stupid on social media, I made a few quips about local media not getting it and not uh, <laughs> not knowing how to cover uh, an event. And it turns out he was sick, which is why he didn't cover the oh, first no. day of it. So he comes in the second day just absolutely chewing me out as I'm trying to introduce the starting lineups for uh, like the second game of the day. And I just, you know, got to like lean over with the mic, just try to get as far away as and it's a small press box, so I can't really get away from him. And then, you know, eight years later, he's uh, he's writing that piece about me, and uh, it was uh, quite a nice turnaround. It took that long, but uh, not. I wasn't usually in the uh, public eye as a PA announcer. Now, gotcha. So it's a, a lot more eyes on you than you're used to. Uh, what are what are some of the PA announcing skills that you're able to bring over to the esports commentary side that have kind of enhanced your game compared to maybe some other casters? Well, definitely uh, learning how to project and uh, kind of control your voice. That's something I learned in college. Because when I went to college, it was for sports broadcasting. And, and announcing really uses a lot of the same tools, right? You learn how to project. You learn how to kind of warm up your voice and all of that and do some kind of vocal exercises here and there. And uh, I, I think the biggest difference between me now and me before going into college forever ago was uh, was posture like you know like right now I'm kind of like hunched over and whatever but uh, you know they, they teach you how important posture and speaking from your diaphragm and all of that is <clears throat> as I sit up a little bit <laughs> yeah right yeah but um, you know it's just uh, stuff like that where you know they teach you like every little thing matters and you know before that it really just felt like you know these guys like Jim Nance and and Mike Tirico they just 
go in the go in the booth and you know they just wing it and there's you know nothing that goes into it beforehand and then once you've actually been behind the scenes and been part of the show you understand yeah there is a lot over several years that goes into what some of the top guys in broadcasting or announcing or any field have done so you found out that there's more of a method to the madness than yeah. how most people kind of see is there a method to the madness for esports commentary that you've discovered um uh, Basically, I've taken a lot of influence from a lot of my favorite sportscasters, and I've tried to kind of weave that into what I do uh, with esports. But the number one thing for me, especially doing Rocket League, is you know just being genuine and, and actually caring about the results and not just being someone who just shows up and does it because, hey, you're going to get paid to do it at the end of the day. And... You know, when, when I go do, like, Rival Series or a DreamHack qualifier, especially watching some of these guys that have come up through the community, I really, really care about seeing these guys succeed. And I'm excited for a lot of them because I've seen them for so long. And, oh, yeah. And I, and I want to share that with the viewers and try to get the viewers kind of on the bandwagon of a team like the Peeps in particular or like Triple Trouble as they made their run into the RLCS. I, I want fans to get behind them. Because it's just good for the scene overall to have more of these teams exposed to bigger fan bases and not just, okay, we know G2, NRG, and Cloud9, and we don't care about anybody else. So to, to pick up on that, how important do you feel the, the Rival series has been, not just for your growth, not just for the scene's growth, but for like giving uh, notice for other teams and players that might not have been in the spotlight before? Oh, it's been huge. I mean, first of all, it's a it is a safety net to some degree because you remember we had an RLCS oh, yeah. <laughs> season where Team Iris didn't make it, and and really that was and, and hey, Flipside came very close. I think they qualified for that season through the losers bracket. So oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, like I mean, I, I remember being in Teamspeak with uh, with like because Twitch ran it at the time, and yeah. um, me being the kind of guy who wants to see the world burn. And, and like Cloud Fuel's in uh, in that uh, chat with us, and we're just watching that whole thing burn down through that whole weekend with with Iris not making it and Flipside going to losers and just going, Cloud, we're not going to have Cuxer in the RLCS. What are you guys going to do? And, and he's just going, <laughs> Oh no, we can't like, no. have this. We can't have this. And and eventually, um, you know, the, the rival series kind of came through uh, out of that and. What it has also done is it's just given more players an opportunity to play for something worthwhile and have a clear path to the top and not just hoping that you're good enough on the day that you end up spiking the one tournament out of however many days leading up to the start of the season. And for the players that have had that opportunity, it's a chance to make a name for themselves. We've seen so many times a player will kind of get plucked out of the rival series, even if they finish like, you know, what what happened with Chicago's team? They were barely top four, if oh, I remember yeah. correctly. They were they were third. He ends up eventually getting called up to the RLCS, and deservedly so, as he's proven. Yeah, we've seen so many situations like that happen. Uh, we also seen players just go directly from being outside of the scene itself yeah. in terms of the rival series and RLCS and going all the way up like we saw happen with uh, Scrub Killer. But uh, one thing I do want to address, since this is a focus on you, Stacks, not just the players. I know we're going to yeah. get to a lot of that stuff later. Is uh, how You know I love talking about them, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone loves talking about them, too. But how important do you feel the rival series being created was for you as a caster? Oh, wow. Uh, well, very important because there there was definitely no way that I was going to just make the jump right into to the RLCS. I, I mean, there were, let's face it, even though lines don't really exist in broadcast, there there were a lot of people in line ahead of me uh, to that deserved a shot at the RLCS and are still getting those chances. So uh, having another big tournament with a field of, you know, four, five, six people that that you could put on the official Rocket League stream. That was huge. I mean, it, it took about a year and a half almost of just being a volunteer to finally do a live event. And 
that and you, you remember it was the Dallas Open. Yeah, so. Dallas Open. That was yeah, great. That, that, those are good times too. And and fortunately, that snowballed uh, with especially with the Midwestland uh, fall brawl a month later. Uh, that kind of parlayed into rival series for the second season of it. And uh, yeah, w- without that, I mean, who knows what? Uh, who knows how many people would have stopped doing uh, esports commentary or just gone and gotten you know real jobs uh, because. <laughs> You know, let's let's face it. There are only so many spots available, and without the rival series, it'd be even more cutthroat. Awesome. So it's great to see like how important that was to you, and it's really like being a caster myself important for everyone because yeah. you said it yourself. If that wasn't a thing, there would be so many people just giving up on their passion. And yeah. let's talk about the the passion itself and uh, the the Dallas Open, like you mentioned before. How did much did that affect you it being your first LAN event? Did it give you enough experience to go forward and try and drive towards the rival series and any other LAN events? Or was it kind of a, a unique experience in itself where you just wanted to go to it, get it done with, and then like review it afterwards? Um, if you had asked me about Friday leading up to that event, I would tell you, no, no pressure at all. It's just, it's just another tournament. I just yeah. happened to be there surrounded by the players. On show day, it was I mean, butterflies in my stomach because, uh, you know, you don't, I mean, you don't get a mute switch. I, you know, I can't go press a button on my keyboard and and uh, if I need to take something over, I can't do that. So, you know, it was uh, it was nerve wracking, but a a great rush as well. You know, just anytime you're part of a live setting, and especially uh, if you've got, you know, any kind of a crowd that's uh, cheering for the players like you know obviously it elevated at the uh, at the world championship in Vegas but oh yeah <laughs> even even for an event there in Dallas where the crowd is friends and family that are shown up it's still really cool that yeah you're broadcasting to Twitch but you've also got a local audience that's kind of watching along and really super invested so uh, yeah that that event um, that was an eye opener for sure because that was just a taste of how difficult it is to actually put on a show like that, and I learned a lot about what I needed to improve. It's great to see like how much feedback you can get from those live events. Yeah. It, it's just awesome experience, and just to go to one if no one's been to a live event that's watching this, totally recommend yeah, it. It's so it. much fun. You get to have tons of great memories and moments with your friends like even rlcs happened recently in newark new jersey that was a great time speaking of rlcs how was the experience at that you got to do the player intros for i think it was the the first day and you did a little bit after that too how was that experience so when i when i had found out and, and well okay i'd assumed before and then i finally beat it out of somebody they confirmed that like golden boy was uh doing the hosting and i was just like Wait, they're still having me do these while Golden Boy is hosting? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and uh, so I, I definitely had a uh, a tough act to follow all weekend, but uh, super thrilled to do the uh, the opening intros because it is it's something that Psionics had ever done before. So I kind of felt like there was a little bit of pressure on me to make sure that we knocked it out of the park, and so that they decided, hey, that was really cool. Let's do it again next time as well. Because I got to have something I can do as part of the world championship, right? Yeah, um, I always got to have your in. <laughs> yeah, right. So, and and I I did notice, like when I when after I was done doing that, it's like, you know, I didn't sound the way I wanted to doing that. Like, I, you know, I watched back a couple of the clips, and I'm like, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't my best. And then I hear Golden Boy doing the intros all week all weekend long, and I'm like, whew, okay. We've really got to step it up. And I think actually having Golden Boy as the host really helped for the uh, the finals because it was a nice little reminder to me, like, hey, I really have a tough act to follow, and I want to make sure I don't just come off like a total dweeb here. And uh, I, I think the, the finals, there's a noticeable difference between those intros and the uh, the opening ceremony, and I was absolutely thrilled to be a part of it. Awesome. Yeah, it was great to see you there and everyone else there, all the teams. And the, the atmosphere is always amazing at these world championships. As always, I'm going to say, 
Go to one if you have not been yes. to one yet. They'll, the great thing about Rocket League is there's the World Championship twice a year. Yep. So you can go if you can't go to one and it's not in your region. Hopefully it'll be in the in EU next time. I know a lot of people are probably uh, hoping <laughs> yeah. and praying for that yeah. too. But uh, I, I I do want to put over that crowd in uh, New Jersey. Though, by the way, I know everybody has said you know oh the crowd sounded dead. Let, let me tell you <laughs> something. Every other venue that has ever held a Rocket League event wishes it was as loud and as hyped up for the finals as oh, Newark yes. was on Friday. Like, that, the Prudential Center was on fire day one. And then day two was outstanding. Day three just blew the roof off of everything. And uh, it was a – like, I, I spent some of the finals uh, in an area kind of behind the scenes where – like, they designed that so that not a lot of crowd noise gets through, and you can yeah. hear them clear as day. It's just they were that loud, and they were that jacked up for what was actually a pretty entertaining final. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a great final, and it's great to see how people are – everyone rags on the North American crowd just being NA yeah. he heavy and booing people and all that. But really, it was just a great event for everyone to get together and cheer on Rocket League itself. Uh, you mentioned how having Golden Boy at uh, World Championship kind of made you take a look at yourself, reflect, and look to improve. What are the next steps you're kind of looking forward to as a caster to work on to get to that next level? Uh, I, I think just trying to get myself in a position where I can do this regularly on kind of a big stage and, and prove that I do deserve to be at some of those bigger events. I mean, you know, Working on the rival series, you know, you are way at the back of the line for some of these bigger events. And uh, so, that you know, maybe there's a little chip on my shoulder, but I feel like um, I stumble over my words still too much. And definitely desk presence is something that has been huge over the past, really, two seasons on rival series. So... Working on that, again, as I'm hunched over here at my desk, doing <laughs> everything I shouldn't be doing, uh, that's the kind of the next step for uh, improving as a caster, I think. Because once, once you get that and you're fully comfortable throughout the whole show, then the rest of it gets much, much easier. And you also mentioned this a little bit earlier, just to go back. Uh, how important is it having a team member for your crew like Gilly just to be able to bounce feedback off of and improve compared to when you guys didn't have her on the team. Oh, I mean, it's huge because she's, she comes from a background where it is, she has been given that advice before. And it's something that's been a passion of hers being a talent manager. And it's something that uh, you can tell just from one conversation with her that, you know, she absolutely cares. And, um, if you have a question for her, you will get a straight answer. And you may not like the answer, but you will absolutely <laughs> You'll get, get one, though. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, Gilly, why do I suck so bad? Here's why, Stax. And I'm like, okay, got yeah, it. Here's an itemized list. Make sure you uh, notice this yeah. point here. <laughs> but but more, more importantly than just saying, hey, here's what you're doing wrong, she'll give you a very detailed explanation like, hey, this is what we're noticing this is how it looks to the viewer. This is what you can do to fix it. And, and just that extra step of like, hey, here's why you should fix it and how. That is uh, invaluable. And it's uh, something that I, I think over the past season of Rival Series, if you go back and look at week one compared to week five, you'll see everybody got infinitely better. And on the RLCS as well. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to see how everything's starting to just work together. And uh, we are going to be wrapping up the, the interview a little bit sooner and going into all the news in a little bit. But I have about like two or three more questions for you. Okay. Where do you see yourself in the next year as a, a caster? Are you going to branch out to more games or just focus in on Rocket League? Oh, I thought you were going to ask me in five years. I'm like, when did this turn into blind date? No. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I think a lot of casters, you know, they don't, obviously everybody wants to be on the RLCS because let's face it, there's infinitely more money involved, right? Yeah. But if I only ever ended up doing rival series until like the end of time, that would be just as well because I really love watching 
the competitiveness in the rival series. There's no safety net for them, right? Like True. if if you lose, if you win two matches in the RLCS, you have a chance to win the world championship, right? You know, if you yeah. win two matches in League Play, if you lose two matches in the rival series you don't know if you even get a chance in the promotion tournament. And and that's what I loved seeing a lot of these guys who in some cases go from being relative nobodies in the competitive scene to almost household names within five weeks because they're just a player that nobody knew about. They come in, they pop off, look at a guy like like Casio, like Alpha, uh, oh, who's yeah. the other guy, Sipical in, uh, yep. with Space Station. I mean, typical now, I, if you saw him during the DreamHack qualifiers, I know we'll get into those pretty soon, uh, he looked like a god. And it's hard to believe that just a couple of seasons ago, without the Rival Series, nobody would know who he is. It, it's great to see how it's fostered the growth of the community as a whole, especially yeah. these up-and-coming players. It gives them that path to pro, which is so important in any esport, I feel. So it's great to see that happen and great to hear your thoughts on that too. Um, last question, we're going to leave it off. Everyone always has these kind of questions whenever they talk to any caster of any sort. What is the, uh, the number one advice you'd give someone starting out as a caster? Oh, man. Uh, broadcasting is fantastic work and a lousy business. So be prepared to put a lot of work in for not a lot in return, especially when you're starting out. Because, you know, there are, you know, when you look at somebody who's got no experience casting, you're a dime a dozen. And you've got a lot of work to put in to separate yourself from everybody else. And you've got to be prepared to make a lot of sacrifices that, to the point where, like, when you're doing this as a volunteer to start out, Treat it like a at least a part time job, if not a full time job, and show that you know you really, really are dedicated to it, and you're not just saying, "Oh, hey, I can do casting instead of going and washing dishes at the restaurant to make money." <laughs> it takes a while to get to that. It, point. it takes a long point, time yeah, to but... get to that point. <laughs> I mean, awesome. it, yeah, I, I graduated college nine years ago. It it took that long for me to reach yep. that point. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's one thing I will chime in here, too, is, like, for everyone, they all have a different path to get to that point, too. I know, like, your path, Jorby's path, Corelli's path, oh, even yeah. how we have Turtle different. now in the RLCS, it's way different than it was beforehand as well. But it, it's great to hear your thoughts on all this here, like, the kind of origins of uh, how you got into broadcasting and use those specific skills you've trained through college and through uh, public announcing it to amp up your game for all the uh, the commentary you've been doing recently and uh thanks again for the interview but we have you on here for the remainder of the show so i do want to go over all the juicy bits that have happened recently we're going to go into the rl esports update we're not stopping for a moment we have a lot of news and announcements that have happened recently we'll start off with the beyond the summit talent announcement any thoughts about the uh, the faces that are very familiar that we see on uh, this announcement that we have here uh, well it's like okay so where did gold rush go clearly it went here <laughs> right i mean you've got you've pretty got much james there you got uh, corelli uh, johnny was part of one of the gold rushes right so uh, i'm pretty sure he was yeah he was uh, yeah so i mean you know it's uh it, it's that event on you know, it's going to be maybe that kind of a vibe on a much, much grander scale. And it, you know, it, it's great to have a, a Rocket League Summit uh, event because I think a lot of people were kind of hoping for it. And Oh, yeah. And for you a while see all, too. and you know, in addition to those names, I mean, you get CJ, CJ on there, who is uh, just a fantastic personality. It, that's what I think uh, this scene really needs is more Personality. personalities <laughs> yeah. and. Uh, you've got a group there. Those six guys, uh, I mean, they would, they could make a tree laugh, honestly. So uh, I, I think that uh, you're going to see a very, very entertaining weekend of Rocket League, and I can't wait for it. Uh, speaking of entertaining weekends of Rocket League, we have the DreamHack Montreal that will be coming up pretty soon in a couple months. But an announcement that came out recently for that, too, is that we finally have coaches allowed to be on stage and talk strategy to players between games during DreamHack Montreal. It's going to be great. 
any uh, surface level thoughts about that sex. Uh, well, that also goes to personality because guess what? While the players are playing, you, you don't really expect them to do a whole lot. They're going to score and they're going to go, yeah. yeah, fist bump, fist bump. That's all they're going to do. The coaches, on the other hand, if you could have seen Dion at uh, the Triple Trouble coach oh, at, yeah. at New Jersey. The, the photos well, are amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I sat behind him for uh, one of the matches. Uh, it was the match that they qualified for day two on. Or no, they, they qualified for day three, rather. And... Uh, he was just losing it. I mean, some, something would go wrong. He was just, like, head in his hands and everything. And, and when when things went well, I mean, he could have punched the ceiling. It was awesome. And you know, that sort of thing is something that you can cut away to and kind of show, like, you know, the coaches showing some reaction. Because guess what? They don't need to be as intently focused on uh, on the game as the players do. And I, so there's that aspect of it. And, of course, the strategic aspect, you know, it's something that people have been wanting for a long time. I think it's overdue. Gfinity did it. It worked. It didn't detract True. from anything. And uh, I think that you're going to see a noticeable difference in not just the quality of play, but the composure of the teams as they get oh, up yeah. on stage. Especially if you've got an inexperienced team, but that has maybe... Uh, even any kind of a coach, but especially a veteran kind of behind them to calm them down, it's going to make a huge difference. I mean, it's, it makes it even better for the recent announcement we saw with Complexity picking up Snasky as their coach. They didn't have a coach before. Now that Snasky, who's been in the scene for such a long time, is able to help those guys out behind the scenes and behind the even player monitors. It'll be great for that to see all the, the advancements from how coaching and Rocket League will be able to interact and also gives more of a reason for people to have coaches, which I know yes. that we, we saw so many of the, the prominent coaches in the scene wanting that for such a long yeah. time because so many orgs and players and even just teams that don't really have an org to represent are like, why do I need a coach? There's no reason for anyone to, to talk to me. I know more than they probably do. But do you know why teams need a coach slash manager? TSM, uh, Complexity, uh, what other team has just been a dumpster fire this off season with all <laughs> sorts of drama? You know, like, and, oh and those gosh. teams have coaches, but they don't necessarily have managers that kind of manage those uh, manage those personalities, manage those egos. And and I think yeah. that's maybe the most overlooked part of being a coach. And that's where someone I where like Greg and I think uh, excels because let's face it. Kadop, Scrub Killer, and Fairy Peak on a team, that is not as easy as he makes it look. No. And, and he does <laughs> a he does about as good a job with them as anybody could expect him to. And you know, Snasky's gonna have his hands full with complexity, but I think you're gonna notice a big, big difference moving forward as the role of a coach evolves and more teams bring them on. They're gonna become commonplace and people are gonna understand, look. The coach is probably going to be the guy who calls the shots that everybody's going to need to check their ego at the door. Oh, yeah, because we see that happen in traditional sports all the time, too. The, yeah. the coach actually commands that kind of respect from the players. And we haven't really seen that level of respect between certain coaches and players. And it's just been a, a big mess. But now they're kind of being forced to adapt to that situation because the teams that do have the coach that works out well, well, the teams that don't, they're like, why don't I have a coach right now? We need to get that going, okay? <laughs> and then eventually yeah. it'll evolve in that sense. So great to see that announcement come out. Shout out to CJ D Pants and the guys there that have been working on the pro circuit for Rocket League. They've been putting in a lot of work behind the scenes to try and amplify the, the reasoning and the necessity of having coaches on stage. So it's great to see that. Uh, one thing that's not really great to see, though, is the rebranding of NRG. Not really Rocket League Esports centered, but it is great to see uh, how their new decal is going to look <laughs> once they uh, change wow. their logo and everything. This great uh, screenshot from uh, Sergeant Pistol. Just a meme, but, you know, great to have a little bit of fun at uh, an organization's expense sometimes, especially this uh, other image that we have. We we just want them to go back to where they were before. <laughs> we thought Dignitas and Complexity were bad, but then, you know, energy just has to be the best of the bunch, it seems. Yeah, I mean, hey, that was uh, that was eye-opening. When, when they showed that, I was like, wow, that 
I mean, hey, we've seen we've seen a lot of rebrands, right? We saw Dignitas go to like the uh, the Team Instinct uh, thing from Pokemon Go. We saw yep. <laughs> uh, you saw Complexity basically be uh, become Allegiance with uh, it, the Cowboy Star instead of the Allegiance Star. Um, yeah, NRGs is uh, interesting. That those look, God bless them. They. They have people that make a lot more money than I do to make those oh, decisions, yeah. but that those hoodies look hideous. <laughs> the the like the bright fluorescent green. It, it, it's just not a good look. Yeah, we, no. We, we like, just want them to go back to the energy we're used to, where they wanted us to pronounce their name as energy instead of NRG. I, I still have to <laughs> rag on that a, a little bit because that was but, a, but a you funny know what? phase. The, their players are absolutely going to stand out even in a dark, a very dark room. True. Because they, you can't miss those. Yeah, I, I think their new like uh, slogan is "We're unapologetic" or something like that. So you know it works out well for the look they're going for. It's just an interesting way to do that. <laughs> uh, speaking of some great interesting news that we have, we have ARG that recently announced a, a roster change. They signed Monkey Moon and said uh, goodbye to GCR. Any thoughts about this uh, this change we're seeing in the roster? ARG been around a while in the Rival Series, too. Yeah, uh, Monkey Moon has looked good in a few tournaments recently, but he's you know been part of a much different roster. I haven't actually seen him play with ARG uh, before they made that announcement. So that was, that was surprising. Uh, I do feel bad for GCR because I was really happy for him that his return run to the Rival Series was so much better than the first time that they oh, made yeah. it. Uh, because, I mean, the first time they looked like they, they didn't belong at all. And he comes in with a new roster and they retain their spot. Uh, Monkey Moon, though, is a very, very good player. And, you know, they went and they signed a French Rocket League player, which if you've watched anything in 2019, you know. <laughs> it's just the year of French a, Rocket yeah, League. <laughs> sign a French Rocket League player and you're probably going to add two wins to your total. So if they manage to go six and one instead of four and three next season in the rival series, hey, who are we to judge? Works out well enough. Now we have some not really breaking news, but some news that has happened recently. We finally know who is the new member of Space Station Gaming's roster. They have an announcement video. Let's take a quick look at that and then tell you guys our thoughts about this whole situation going on. Arsenal to Space Station Gaming is perfection. I mean, if anyone knows about perfection, it's me. I play God in Bruce Almighty for crying out loud. Arsenal so this one through, and all three of Birds and Bees come through into the corner. It's another unassisted goal, and Birds and Bees are just sitting there watching. The mist is so late on this challenge. He knows that it has to come. It goes straight in. Waltis, he tries to get a clear onto this ball. He says Birds and Bees back wall is more time wasted off the clock. And Arsenal scored for the peeps. A blizzard of offense this season. To respond, that's exactly what Mist did. But a touch back out to Arsenal. Look at the passing play from the peeps. That play, Reynolds gets up. Off the pass from Ty Not Tyler and Arsenal has a shot. Arsenal has a goal to cut it off. Can they get one more chance? Reynolds, Arsenal, shot! Arsenal! Tie game! Good height, great placement, right underneath the crossbar. No hope for saving that one in the peep this point. All right, all right, all right. Arsenal looking like a sweet picker. Yes, game, but, I mean, for, at this point. Fellow citizens of not only the United States of America, but of the world, Space Station Gaming has made a big move here. I think you will all be delightfully surprised. That was a, a very interesting way to announce a player, but we know Space Station, those guys are amazing with their social yeah, media game. Uh, how do you feel about them finally announcing Arsenal as a part of their roster? Uh, I I feel bad for the peeps because boy are they going to be on the eight ball. They did <laughs> not expect to have a roster change this off season. Uh, Arsenal is fantastic, and uh, you know he's another guy who I, I think is going to be a star in the uh, the RLCS. He's got he's got great energy about him when he plays. Uh, when I, I said it during the uh, qualifiers, when Arsenal is 
playing really well and he's popping off, it feels like it's four on three because he's just everywhere on the field. And I, I think he's going to do some real great things with uh, with Space Station. That And that's a very young roster, too. True. So, like, that that's a roster where, like, they're all too young to understand that they're supposed to be nervous and that they're not supposed to be able to beat the likes of NRG or Cloud9. And they just might show up and bop one of them right on top of the noggin. So I, I think that, that this offseason has gone... About as well as it could have for Space Station after they uh, after they handled that Sathu situation, I think questionably would probably yeah. be the uh, the polite way to put it. Yeah, not not too much we can personally say about that situation, but it is great to see Arsenal get on that kind of a roster and be able to move forward in the RLCS. He did recently qualify for it with the Peeps and also Birds and the Bees did recently qualify. We'll talk about the roster change we saw happen with those guys a bit later on. We're going to do a, a speed round now with some of these uh, news posts, but uh, the next one we have is we love polls for Rocket League. I know you guys all love voting in polls too. We have another poll for you to vote in for Rocket League to be featured this time as a LAN and I think online event. So vote for Rocket League in this poll. It is the uh, Esports Midwest poll. I'll see if I can post a link to that in chat, but uh, you can you can find that uh, at the Esports Midwest Twitter, and you know we're 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 dominating as we normally do in these polls, unless Rainbow Six Siege is a part of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I've heard that if they don't get eighty percent, they're just going to put Rainbow Six in anyway. So ah, no, uh, de definitely make sure you get your votes in. I think they're at seventy three percent right now. That's that is a sizable advantage over Black Ops Four Five v Five. Which yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, not not the great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now we're gonna move on to our next topic for the evening. It will be the off season specials. We got some results. We got some tournament information. Gonna get into the meat of all this great stuff. Uh, quickly going over the ESL Brazil Premier League season nine. Finally saw the results for the groups A and B. We see Erodium and Lotus rising to the top, and we saw Erodium dominate Lotus three to one. And then in Group B, we saw Loki and Friendly Team uh, beat out Orchid and Shift Esports. A lot of people expecting Orchid to make it there. Top four teams, Erodium, Friendly Team, Loki, Esports, and Lotus. Any thoughts about these teams before we move on to the next topic? Uh, yeah, I'll make it super quick. I, I'm, you know, Kayo it has a chance to finally win one of these big events. I think he's had a lot of pressure maybe put on him unfairly by a lot of American fans who only know, like, Kayo is kind of like Dumbo down in Oceania where he'll play those North American tournaments and make a run with really bad ping. So everybody just thinks he's like the Cronovia of South America, but he's yet to win one of those big uh, South American events. Didn't make Worlds, didn't qualify for a DreamHack Montreal. The window's closing on Kayo, but I think if, if he's going to win one of these bigger events, this is going to be the one right here. They got a tough one with uh, Lotus, I think, in their uh, playoff yep, match. Lotus in the first round. There is only two rounds to face yep. off, but it, it'll it'll be tough to see who makes it out of that all the way to the uh, the playoff situation that'll be happening with that. It, it's just great to see that they have this consistency going on. But actually, they are. It's a so there's two teams facing off: a Rodium friendly team, and then Loki and Esports and Lotus. And then whoever wins out of those two games makes it on. I think it's to another LAN event that we saw happen in the previous uh, uh, season that was actually going on during league play. So great to see more events go on for South American team. But now we got to move on to something that you might be a little bit more familiar with stacks is the Rocket League WGN, WGN mouthful uh, North American championship qualifiers. They're finally done other than closed qualifier. We have up anything you want to tell us about these teams, who to look out for that might qualify for the final live event. That's going to be going on pretty soon. Yeah, they have an eight-team double elimination tournament that you can see there. Uh, RBG Esports, I was surprised that they didn't just win one of the qualifiers outright to go to the True. grand finals. Uh, so they're going to have to finish in the top three. Uh, the top three will go to the event at Fan Expo Canada next month. Uh, Seabass, Rapid, and Aeon, that's uh, that's the new roster change for RBGs. They've, uh, they've said goodbye to Astro. They've brought in Seabass. Astro has already qualified uh, for those finals, so... Be interesting to see those uh, two players match up. Avidity Esports goes in as the number one seed because they had the most points. 
But that goal patrol team is as talented as any team in this tournament with Dapper, Shadow, and Tynot Tyler. I would oh, yeah. imagine if their heart's <laughs> in it that they should be one of the teams. But you're going to have a semifinal matchup between goal patrol and RBG in the upper bracket. And once the team gets knocked down to lowers, we saw it in those old RLCS play-ins. Oof. You know, all heck can break loose at that point. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Gold Patrol didn't make it, but I would certainly expect them to make it. And then the third team, probably streamers. I mean, Vince, Vince is really good. Wonder Very Mike, true. yeah, Wonder Mike, solid. I, I guess they're going to play with talent. I think they've played three of the qualifiers, had a different third every time. <laughs> who knows who they're going with? Uh, but yeah, I, I think that. The fight for that third spot is going to be real fun to watch. It, it'll be great to see because the, the great thing about these qualifiers is there's been four events that have taken the majority of a day for yeah. the open qualifiers for people to get to that point. Okay, they, they get through the, not, not really the gulag, but basically the, it's not even a battle royale, it's just an insane showdown between all these teams yeah. trying to grind it out get those points, and then qualify for the final event. And then now they have a close qualifier they have to worry about as well. Insane to see from all that stuff. Uh, we do have the prizes that will be happening. For those who don't know about the WGN North American Championship, uh, it is great that they're going to be having such a big prize pool and also a spot to be invited to DreamHack Montreal. How important is having that invitational spot uh, open for the players that are trying to win this event? Oh, it's huge, and especially when you consider there are no RLCS players in this tournament. So it's you know very similar to last year; they didn't have any rival series, uh, any rival series top four, and RLCS players in it. Uh, you know, it's a chance for those players that are fighting to make a name for themselves and try to prepare for the rival series to get some big event exposure and you know kind of gel as a team and also try out some new rosters. So. Uh, it, it's huge that they have that Montreal invite. That's something that DreamHack has done. Uh, they did it with Valencia. They uh, had a, a Spanish league linked to uh, Valencia invites as okay, well. Cool. And uh, yeah, that was where that RCD Espanol team uh, came uh, from. Ah, gotcha. That makes sense. And, and so they're doing this too, that it just involves another community organization to run kind of a big deal tournament. It's a $20,000 prize pool. Like it's... Uh, it's a nice little event to get a look at kind of the future of the rival series and perhaps the RLCS because you got guys like Taroko, Ralph, and AXB that won the last one. Yeah, and they'll be hoping to to get that. I think a few of them are actually part of different teams this time, so that'll yes. be some interesting drama going on there. Great to see a lot of people going out to qualify for this. Also helps us out, too, so we know some of these teams a little bit before it gets yep. to those big events, especially the DreamHack Montreal itself. Uh, speaking of DreamHack Montreal, we finally have the qualifier section of the show Going over the results for each region, talking about the teams that qualify. We're going to start with EU. Look at the bracket over there and the teams who qualify for that. Any surprises out of the people who qualified and did not quite make the mark here? Uh, I mean, there are only, uh, what, three teams that could qualify. And, I, you know, I don't think there were any real surprises. I mean, Triple Trouble losing as early as they did was kind of surprising. I thought they would have been able to make a, uh, a better run. But, you know, you've got PSG, Vitality, and Barca. I, I think in every region, these qualifiers were actually great for the scene because you finally had teams that were supposed to be good that were good in we're this consistent, uh, qualifier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like PSG is a team that they, they won a major, and unlike every other team not named Cloud9 that's won a major, they didn't forget how to hit the ball. So uh, <laughs> it's good to see them have, you know, back-to-back -back strong results. Vitality with a nice recovery after they were probably really disappointed in Valencia. And uh, Barcelona, look, look, they are, with qualifiers, Barcelona is outstanding. Get them at the live event. That's the next step for them. I want to see what Roken can do with these guys to see if they can, you know, kind of get over the hump and maybe win one of these things. That's why I feel like having the coaches on stage is going to work yes. so well for Roken and those players because yeah. you could tell at the, the World Championship, they just got into their heads so many times when they, if they just thought and took a deep breath, they would have been able to do yeah. amazingly in the remaining of the, the and, tournament that they unfortunately weren't able to participate too long in. Yeah, and, and what's weird is 
like the uh, the off stri- off stage matches, the coaches are pretty close to them during the matches. It, it, it's not like that's anything that's revolutionary. You, if you were at Dallas, you would have seen Roman oh, yeah. was you know right there <laughs> with his team. Uh, right up to the point where they played, and I'm pretty sure they were interacting with them in between games. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Um, yeah, they, they did so well all the way up to the actual top eight, and then it's just like, whoop, yeah. they don't have anyone to talk to anymore. They're used to doing that, especially during league play for the RLCS, because you can actually like talk to your players during those yeah. sort of situations as yeah. well. But it's a whole different situation like that. Now it's kind of meshing. Great to see that. Uh, Let's move on to the North American side of the bracket. We actually saw a lot of people surprised by one of the teams who qualified here. It was the Afterthought squad who actually did pretty well. 3-2 against Space Station. Space Station, the team we mentioned before, had that roster change. Looked quite well themselves, but Afterthought won the day there. And then eventually Space Station were able to qualify by beating Ghost Gaming. Any thoughts about this Afterthought roster? Are they a force to be reckoned with if they stay together? Well, it's they can't really stay together because First Killer can't play this. True. So, so, that, so that it's really weird to see that team going into Montreal because you know, if we keep with the schedules we've had in the RLCS, the, those players are all going to be... Shock and Sathu may be together uh, if they make a rival series run, but you know they're going to be playing with a different roster going through play-ins and hoping to get ready for league play. And then Montreal's going to come along and it's going to be like, well, uh, <laughs> here we are. I guess we'll show up and try to try to surprise somebody. Uh, but but they did look really good. You know, Sathu. Look, everybody knows Sathu's really good. First killer. Everybody knows he's really good. Uh, Shock was actually the guy I was kind of worried about, and he played very very well for uh, for Afterthought there. And uh, I think that they're going to struggle when they get to the main event at Montreal. But in that qualifier, they looked as good as anybody. They look pretty good. G2, very consistent. Ghost even looks strong with having Mist as their third. Yep. That was the first tournament they were able to test him out. We saw a uh, memory misplay together in the brawl that we had on uh, Lawler's channel last week, or like two weeks ago, actually. Uh, and he looked pretty solid there. And then Space Station, they were just able to take the victory. Had more drive, it seemed. Ghost gave oh, yeah. a bit more passive. Well, yeah, Sipical was amazing down yeah. in the lower bracket. <laughs> I didn't get to see much of them in the upper, but when the, when they came down to the lower bracket, they uh, typical couldn't miss. You couldn't pay them to miss. And then let's move on to the OCE region and the things that uh, were very interesting happening in those yeah. grand finals. They only have one spot instead of the three that happened in North America and EU. So they had a bracket reset situation, and then they dominated with their third hawk. Some calling him the OCE scrub killer. <laughs> Thoughts on that? Hey, so every region gets one, right? And and yeah. honestly, it was easy to forget that OCE had a uh, a qualifier after the uh, the world championship because they <laughs> like that as a region they struggled. Yes, right? they, and they so, did not do too well. And like I knew they had one, but I couldn't tell you for the life of me who had got that spot. And and then I talked to uh, you mentioned CJ Link, the admin uh, yeah. for DreamHack, and he's like. You know, yeah, the, this hawk kid just dominated. You got to go check him out. And I'm like, okay. And I fe- I just kind of rolled my eyes like, okay, yeah, I'm sure anybody can look good one time. He looked amazing. Like, I went back and I, I got to see some of that. He is outstanding. And, and you mentioned some people saying, like, the OCE scrub killer. Yeah, every region gets one. And I'm really sad that it's going to be a while till he gets to play in the RLCS. But man, when he gets there, it's gonna be nuts. Because oh I, yeah, <laughs> I mean there were times where I he looked like he looked like he would. I hesitate to say this, but there were times he looked like he could start on most North American rosters at the very least. Oh yeah, we saw like it wasn't the greatest results, but we saw what happened when one of the top OCE players moved over to this region, and yeah, you know. Things didn't work out well for them, but that might not have been the fault of the player. That's a whole other story to talk about at another day. But great to see the Chiefs get the spot there after getting bracket reset by Renegades and able to dominate. They had a game where they went like 10 to 1, 10 to 5. Okay, that was a little bit closer, but that's because they scored so many goals with Hawk kind of leading the charge there. And now going to the South American qualifier. Very important moments in the one spot that was for that one. We saw a 3 0 happen for. 
Ints against Lotus, and then Lotus coming back, getting a 3-1 of their own. Thoughts about how Lotus have been looking recently with all the, the roster changes that have been going on? Yeah, that, that was going on while we were doing the uh, the Rocket League Central stream yeah. for uh, for the North American qualifier. And it was really hard to pay attention to the match that I was <laughs> casting because I really wanted to see that South American match. So every now and then, uh, like while well, Daz is saying something, let's kind of look over at my other screen and see, oh, okay, yeah, Lotus is really taking the fight to him. And then I, you know, after they just dominated in the, uh, or rather, uh, Int was uh, taking it to Lotus. So after INTZ reset the bracket, I just turned it off. I'm like, okay, they're going to just dominate the second time around. It'll be every bracket reset you've ever seen. I look later, and it's 2-0 Lotus. I'm like, oh, holy cow. These guys came back to play. Yep. And, you know, <laughs> Ren Renan is uh, – I think he's going to be a star down there in South America if he isn't already. Uh, he is outstanding. Uh, Haber Camp is a lot of fun to watch as well. That, that Lotus team, when they come to Montreal, that – that will be fun to watch. I'm interested to see how they uh, adjust to that kind of environment. We saw Loki and we saw Ince at the World Championship, and Ince did it a lot better than most people thought. A lot of people thought Erodium would be there, but unfortunately yep. they didn't make the cut because of all the freaking <laughs> the, the best of sevens and them not being able to win those last games that happened during yep. the, the RLCS regular season for them during the Grand Series. But great to see more representation from them. How much do you think this helps? We, we talk about this all the time. Level up the region whenever a new region is introduced. We saw it happen with OCE when the players went back from the World Championship. They were able to intermingle, change the rosters. Now there's three teams that are getting to experience the international competition. Do you think that's just going to propel South America forward even more than we saw OCE happen? I, I think it will because you, you've got, first of all, not to say that Oceania doesn't, but you've also got a very passionate group of people with the uh, the Rocket Street guys oh, down yeah. in South America that that have constantly been pushing that scene to the next level time and time again. And when you have these South American tournaments where you've got three or four teams that, you know, on a given day really could win it and you wouldn't be that surprised. Yeah, that's that's huge for the region because it makes those events more watchable. Uh, when you get, uh, you know, like when you had an o Oceania where uh, the Chiefs were winning everything or Alpha City and nobody, nobody could beat these, uh, these top teams and somebody finally does, that's also exciting. But leading up to that, if nobody else challenges them, less people are inclined to actually watch it. Uh, I think with South America, you've got a group of four teams that can win any major tournament. And, oh, yeah. You, know, you go <laughs> to that ESL Brazil event that uh, uh, is going to be going on soon. Any of those teams, well, th three of those four teams. Three of those teams, yeah. yeah three of those teams. <laughs> There's a team in there that's going to be over their head. But three of those teams could win it if you ran that tournament three different times. So uh, that's going to be a ton of fun to watch and just – South American commentary is fantastic to oh, listen to. Beautiful. <laughs> I, I love whenever a goal is scored, they just go on for ages. I need to yeah. set that as like my ringtone as one of them, just saying <laughs> goal over and over again. Yeah, it's great Chimaco was awesome. Oh, yeah, Chimaco is amazing. We had him on the show last week, too. Yeah. And he even talked about it. it's like the four top teams eventually for the region to grow even more. They need it to branch out to be like a top eight, like we see happening. Uh, in RLCS and I mean, not RLCS in North America and in uh, EU, we see all those teams kind of leveling up and getting to that point. So eventually, we'll probably see that if the defense is fixed for South America, which hopefully happens at some point because that's really the the biggest issue. And I'm sure if Lotus gets stomped at DreamHack Montreal, then they'll kind of know, okay, we need to work on this even more. So yeah. <sighs> Because we saw that happen so much at the, the World Championship. If they had better defense, might have been able to make it even farther than they did make it out of the, the group stages. But uh, let's talk about... So we have all the teams that have qualified other than the one that qualified for World Gaming Network so far. We have G2. We got Afterthought Space Station for North America. EU. We have Vitality, PSG, Barcelona. And then they're joined by the Chiefs in OCE and Lotus in South America. Any specific teams on that list you think have uh, a greater shot at taking it all 
I, I'm, I'm going to say minus Vitality in G2. <laughs> okay, PSG. Next. PSG. Okay, minus <laughs> no, uh, PSG. PSG what? did win the last wow. one, though. <laughs> if, I, if I just... Um, of those teams... Uh, because I, I am excited to see what PSG does. You know, I want to see yes. them have two great majors back to back. Have the consistency. Everyone's been wanting that. Exactly. Um, I mean, I think the uh, kind of the sleeper pick among those teams is probably Space Station because, you know, it's going to be in AXB's backyard up there in Montreal. He's got big True. stage experience. And uh, I think that that team is, uh, they're going to turn some heads, I think, at, uh, at DreamHack Montreal. It wouldn't surprise me. I don't think they're going to win it, but it wouldn't. My jaw wouldn't hit the floor if they made a deep day three run. Yeah, we even saw like a similar situation happen with the old ambition roster. That's a throwback to DreamHack Atlanta. Yeah, when they got in the top eight, that might be a situation here with Space Station, especially based off the talent that we see on that team. But uh, any final thoughts about the the qualifiers as a whole that happened recently? Also, shout outs to all the teams that have been working on the production side for the broadcast. We had Rewind Gaming and also had Rocket Baguette during the closed qualifier for EU. We had uh, Rocket League Central and Rival Esports for North America. Yummy Cheese Man, love the guy. He was working with some of the OCE crew on the OCE broadcast. And then we had Rocket Street on uh, the South American broadcast. Kudos to all those guys. We also have Lawler, Shogun, uh, all these other, uh, Dazzler and even working on the broadcast during the open qualifier. Apart from that... A lot of mouthful, a lot of stuff to talk about. Give shout outs to people all around. So many people deserve credit with all this. Anything yeah. else you want to talk about for the uh, the qualifiers themselves? Uh, just just wanted to reiterate that I, I think for every region, those qualifiers were a great positive for their respective regions because in Europe, three of the best teams got there. There were there were no surprises. Nobody really laid an egg. Uh, in North America, G2, everybody knew G2 was the best team that was in the qualifier. They dominated. Uh, Space Station and Afterthought, they had a great match in the uh, the upper bracket, and then Space Station gets there. Uh, I mean, the only team anybody would have been disappointed in is Rogue because you know they beat oh, yeah. like, they beat X Splice, and then they they didn't do anything. So uh, yeah, they got yeah, I mean, they, in lower bracket. But you know that that's also like they had a good summer up to that point. They were bound to have a bad event. This was it. They're still going to go to Montreal. And yeah. at that point, you know, all bets are off. They could they could go win the whole thing for for all anybody knows. Um, you know, Chiefs, uh, Chiefs was a great story with Hawk. And that final with Lotus and INTZ, uh, that was, that was a, a nice advertisement for South American Rocket League for sure. Oh, yeah. I feel like any final at this point, if you want to tune in, just go to the Rocket Street channel yeah. and then just look through all the VODs. Find, like, one of the final series. You'll, you'll be entertained every single time. Yeah. Not just by the casters, not just by the players, but the, the whole energy the scene brings to the, the competitive scene as a whole for Rocket League. It's just great to see. I, 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 just, I just love those guys. They're great. Yeah. That's all I, that's all yeah. I can say. Oh, we, we, could, <laughs> we could spend another hour fanboying about something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you even saw in uh, Yummy Cheese Man, he changed some of his emotes, and South America was the only one that had, like, a crown. Everyone else had one of the, the poop emojis. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's pretty great to see the, the worldwide support for that region, how they recently got added to uh, the RLCS. Uh, moving on from DreamHack Montreal, lots to digest there, but we still got a little bit more of the show to get through before we are done with. We have astronauts tournaments back. The July schedule has been released. It's, one of them is actually going on today. Otherwise, we would have been getting an interview with Sathu about his uh, roster that he qualified for. But we got the 2v2 and the 3v3. Any thoughts about like how important these Astro events have been during the offseason? Because we've seen some huge teams and big plays made at them. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of a throwback to when, you know, the groups like Nexus and Rival would have uh, weekly tournaments. It's just, you know, consolidate those prize pools into a bigger monthly prize pool and, and make it more, you know, worthwhile for some of these teams to play and actually get some reps in. Uh, I, I think it's great. You know, the 2v2 is a nice change of pace, but really it's the 3v3 that, you know, everybody kind of looks at, and especially oh, now yeah. because everybody wants to know who's playing with who and... <laughs> 
Uh, Who is energy's know. third? Let exactly. Us know. Yeah. Right. Well. Yeah. We were waiting yeah. for a week. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, they're, they're probably look. I I was scouring replays on calculated.gg trying to see. Hey, did anybody upload like scrim replays? Can I see who they're playing with? No, it didn't happen. Okay, now I'm done caring because I can't possibly <laughs> find out who it is. But yeah, uh, yeah. The uh, the the astronaut tournaments. I mean, they put on a good show. It's uh, it's usually very entertaining with uh, with the team. Uh, yeah, Sathu is uh, in this month's, and I think they won it, or maybe it hasn't gone final yet. But you're teaming it's, up. It's with, about to get to that point. Yeah, at some point. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. They have first the brackets. Ki- yeah, first killer and Sathu on a team. Like, look, first killer is just a world beater. So, uh, yeah, I, I would imagine uh, they're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Then when the three v three rolls around next week, yeah, you know, you're gonna see some uh, some fun little wrinkles in some of these oh, yeah. rosters <laughs> especially like you know reynolds has already teased hey they know who their third is Ooh, uh he was saying uh, yeah he he said in one of these discords like hey yeah we know who our third is we're gonna be changing our astronauts roster or something like that I'm like okay i'm interested but it's a week away yeah, it's a week away. We'll we'll probably like look into the rosters uh, next week's show. We won't be able to see the results for that. We'll be able to see results for this one. It actually is uh, afterthought and uh, noble X linked. Uh, assuming those teams are playing together, one for one player from each in the grand finals that's going on right now for that. So definitely is, tune into that. Is Zombie Poop over. Shark in the finals? Is he playing this thing? Oh I no, think it's he out. Might- no, it's Alpha Cap and Joe Freshness. Okay, ah, okay, how okay. disappointing. I mean, it's still solid to see <laughs> those guys. You know, Joe Freshness, he's been around the scene for a while. Definitely in the, the Rocket League Discord yep. and the eSports channel. Great to see the guys there. And yep. great to see the guys yeah, in the chat from yeah, there as Joe well. Is, Joe is awesome. Having him at the World Gaming event last year was great. And it, it's also another thing, too. It's like you kept bringing it up during your interview. It's great to see all these players and how well they've been able to adapt and advance their careers as Rocket League players, especially thanks to the Rival Series and all these open tournaments we've been having. DreamHack, thank you so much because it's been great to see all the yes. awesome action on land for all that. Even the B-Stream being a part of that was awesome. But it, B-Stream as a whole is great. It's just Amazing to see how the scene has been progressing, but it all started at the roots, the grassroots of Rocket League Esports. We do have to talk about some of the smaller tournaments that have been going on for our final topic of the evening. Well, final before the outro. Uh, We have the Rival Esports Summer Open EU going to be going on this weekend. They have a $1,500 prize pool. Pretty solid chunk of change. Make sure you sign up. If there are any EU viewers here that are maybe watching, probably all asleep right now, but they'll they'll check out the VOD, hopefully. (laughs) And uh, it's just great to see, like, Rival Esports and all these other orgs put together more tournaments like this, especially during the offseason. Yeah, it really is. And, again, you get to kind of look at these other rosters and start speculating. And that's, I mean, like, that's that's the highlight of everybody's offseason, right? Like, you you see, okay, who's who's Method playing with? Because they want to know who the next great player is that's going to leave them and go to the RLCS. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, mean, I, I really feel I mean, that, bad that's for, true. That I is feel very bad true. for Rick Ronda and Burrito B because they, they've had they've had Cassio as a teammate. They've had who else did they have? Uh, Astral as a teammate at a uh, at a pretty big event, and they're both in the RLCS now. And they are still trying to grind it out in the rival series. Uh, Blurry is their teammate for the uh, the summer open. It looks like, so we'll see. Go get yeah, go it's bet the great. house on it's Blurry out. getting into the RLCS in, within the next eight months. Yeah, he'll be picked up on one of the rosters that need yeah. uh, a player like yeah, the, the right. bricks, right? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 bricks, bri- uh... the br- bricks next season they'll drop Cuxer and they'll pick up Blurry. <laughs> Oh, that'd be great. Or even like TSM with all the, the problems that have been going on there. <laughs> but uh, there, there's there's so much great roster mania going on in the offseason. It's, it's definitely not uh, boring in any sense of the word. Uh, we do have to move on to the brawl. We did see a roster change maybe happen because that which was the, the move for Mist going to, over to Ghost Gaming hasn't been officially confirmed yet, but they were trying him out. Uh, we do have the captains. That have been drafted this. This is the EU version of it. Uh, unfortunately, I think it was uh, Yukio or was not able to make it. One of those players on the captains, and instead uh, they'll have a different person sub in. But it's great to see this kind of tournament with a captain's draft. 
We used to see this all the way back. Uh, what was the tournament org? I know you can remember better than I BVV can. BVV Gaming. BVV Gaming. I don't know if they're still running events, but great to see that kind of captain's draft style come back. And especially with the, the prize pool and the support behind it. With all these pro players, it's a great time. It, it gives us kind of a preview on how awesome the uh, Beyond the Summit event is going to be. Just because yeah. you see all the personalities interacting together on the stream. Yeah, and, and that's Lawler going back to his roots, too. Because, you, know, yeah. you know, he and VVV, they go way, way back. So, you know, just kind of bringing back a little flash from the past. and uh, Or blast from the past. And uh, easy for me to say, right? So, yeah, seeing uh, seeing these guys all interact with each other. I mean, I would find it hard to believe that anybody made a roster change based on, hey, we played really good in this captain's draft in the middle of July. But I've seen stranger things in Rocket League off season, so I guess it <laughs> wouldn't really surprise me. Uh, but, yeah... It, it, it's going to be entertaining, especially he gets uh, he gets a lot of great personalities on there uh, yeah. to join him on uh, commentary or something that resembles commentary at times. And it, it's just a good time uh, for a few hours on the weekend. So uh, looking forward to this week's uh, brawl and you know seeing if uh, if he kind of mixes it up as they uh, as they go on through the off season. Yeah, so to correct myself from earlier, uh, Yukio is being replaced by Blurry, who was going to be on the Method roster for the Summer Open. So, oh, of course! Yeah. There we'll, it is! We'll get All to right, see him begins. play with these players. Is, is he, uh, he going to be a captain? Yeah, he'll be a captain. He'll be a captain. So th there's going to be Fairy <laughs> Peak... Turbo Pulsa, Greasy, KDOP, all in this thing, and Blurry's going to be a captain. He's already taking over Europe. It, that's, it's been prophesied. Enjoy, so Stack Rick, said it here Rick's, first, yeah, everyone. Rick's, Make sure you Rick's, get your clips ready. <laughs> Rick's and Burrito B, enjoy him while you got him. It's not going to last long. It's going to oh, be man. heartbreak after uh, the tournament this weekend for them. But uh, we, we'll move on to another another great uh, community event that's been going on. The, the Skirmish Invitational. Daz yep. has been having a blast with those on his channel. We have uh, the results from that. Uh, Noble GG were the ones who won. You can see the bracket here. Uh, upper 90 giving them some trouble. And Boulevard, a lot of these players and teams uh, testing out their rosters during the offseason. And it's great to see tournaments like this give them a spot to do that in kind of a controlled setting instead of having to figure out, okay, which weekly are we going to play? And then maybe they'll line up and someone else will compete in the same one. Maybe not. It might just be us taking the victory there. <laughs> yeah. What was uh, what was great for, uh, you know, I know we're seeing uh, Noble there, and it's good to see that they're still looking really good going into uh, – they'll be at the World Gaming Finals. Yeah. They've already qualified straight through. They won the first qualifier for that. Uh, the uh, the Boulevard team that they beat in the finals, uh, I was really happy to see that they had a strong result in this thing because I saw them during the week before uh, that event, a much smaller event, and they looked like they, they got matched up with Linked Up. And they didn't look like they belonged on the field with them. You know, oh, Linked yeah. Up just had a field day. They did whatever they wanted for as long as they wanted to in that matchup. And Boulevard came back. They got knocked down to the lower bracket by Upper 90 in this one. And then they run through the lower bracket. They beat Upper 90 there. And they uh, they take Noble the distance. You know, that's a really good result. for They're, they're going to be a front line in that uh, World Gaming Tournament if it's the same three, which it was. So... Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do in that uh, that tournament this weekend. This was a, a nice little tune-up for them, and uh, there will not be any skirmish this week, but no. uh, we'll see if they can carry that momentum from last week into this weekend. Yeah, it'll be great to kind of see how things go for those uh, close qualifiers. I, I can't believe I forgot to say the date for the World Gaming Network close qualifiers. That is this weekend. Is it the Saturday or is it the Sunday? I it think is it's Saturday. 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 Saturday at, oh, I asked them in that Discord, 3 o'clock, I believe. It's not streamed. Sometime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it won't be streamed, but, you know, like, if you just go to Liquipedia at some point during the night, they will, they'll probably have that thing updated in real time, because Lucas and the guys over there, they Those, do a they fantastic job. They do such great job. work. Yeah, they, they are, they are a godsend. It's great to see all the work that the, the Liquipedia people have been putting in. I mean, it makes our lives easier, too, because we can just quickly search, okay, what tournaments has this team participated in? Yeah. Maybe they've been on this roster. Instead of having to, like, theorycraft, just 
sort through all the tweets and go through all the brackets ourselves like we used to. Any oh. anytime you see anytime you hear us uh in the past talk about a team's history in the rival series, you might as well just put a disclaimer on the bottom, courtesy <laughs> Liquipedia. <laughs> I mean they're yeah. just a wealth of knowledge there between them and Octane. I mean it's it's more information than you could ever possibly use. And uh, it's it's great to have. They're they're awesome resources. Another thing that's great to have is a, a community tournament that's been going on, run by Yummy Cheeseman. He's been doing yes. a lot of great initiatives for the OC region. Is the gauntlet that's happened uh, very consistently? I think this was the like ninth week of it or something. And Renegades continue to dominate, twelve to three now, ten time champion. So they're looking pretty solid so far against all these top teams. And a gauntlet-style bracket, it's basically seeded top four, and there's a team that qualifies from kind of a bubble player gauntlet-style bracket to get to that point. And then teams have to just move up the ladder and eventually take on the last team to get the win for that week. So great to see them get some kind of training in and some good practice against these teams in the offseason. Yeah, and... You know, Oceania is a region that could definitely use more events like that. I think I'd like to see South America do something similar to that as well. I think the the more the more big events you can run and promote and build them up to be like a really big deal, uh, the better off you are. It's that simple. Uh, you know, kind of take a pro wrestling uh, approach to it. Oh yeah, just you know, get people really interested in your events. Take your Take your champions, your best teams, and put them up on a pedestal. Build them up to be larger than life. And then when somebody finally does knock them off, if somebody you know manages to get lucky and spikes a weekend to take out the Renegades, it's going to look that much cooler. And it's some, some great replay work that you can look at later yep. on that maybe you might not have saved it. But like seeing it from the perspective of broadcast compared to you just going in at your own pace and the analysis that some of the casters might have just gives you that little bit more that you can use to improve and step up your game, which is great to see for a lot of these teams. And that's why the skirmish is so important. The brawl, it's more of a cool thing to happen, but it makes people work with other players that they might not get to play off all the time. It's why we saw one of the... I'm, I'm still going to say it, maybe it wasn't, but it's why we saw Mist on Ghost because he works so well with memory. Yep. They won their run through the brawl with the, the captain's draft situation there, so... Great to see all the, the community contributions happening across the board for all these players. Yeah. Hey, look, Ghost is a, a team that has changed its roster literally every season. <laughs> it would not surprise me. It's still me there, though. If, it's still yeah, in the RLCS. Yep. Yeah, it would not surprise me if they said, hey, Mist, you and I did really good in that brawl in July. Yeah. Come on over. Left. See ya. <laughs> Mist is the new flavor of the month. <laughs> Uh, but they, they did pretty well making it all the way to the, the final qualifying match during DreamHack Montreal. It's just yep. bittersweet for them because that's the second time that not that specific roster, but Ghost Gaming as an organization has been in that situation. It yep. happened during DreamHack Valencia qualifiers. They were one game and one series away. It didn't quite make it. It happens all the time with Ghost Gaming, it feels. When they get the game fives, they just they just can't do anything about it. And you know what's really funny is who beat them uh, on the uh, – no, wait. Am I – no, I'm getting the team drunk. Are you, are you talking Never about who mind. beat them in the upper bracket? No. Uh, no, that, I'm thinking of Space Station. Never mind. I was going to say okay. uh, it was uh, – It was G2. And G2 right. doesn't lose game, game five. Yeah, so. yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, no, I was uh, I was looking at uh, Seabest. Did, did Seabest get a shot against, uh, against Ghost in that uh, tournament at all? I don't think he did, actually. Cause, yeah, because he was their sub this season. I thought it would have been great for, for him. But no, uh, I think that was something that could have happened and never did. So yeah. never mind. I was going to say something profound. Instead, I have absolutely nothing. It happens sometimes. <laughs> we did see Ghost against uh, Birds and Bees. It's been a Bees, long night. Interesting. Yeah. It has been a long night. But yeah, we, we saw Ghost gaming versus uh, Birds and the Bees. That was interesting. Ghost just outplayed them miss seemed to be like a key component to that roster and birds and bees didn't really have anything they could do there so great to see how the, the roster mania has already shook up some of these teams 
so far, and it's going to continue to do that as we await the third announcement for uh, NRG whenever that finally uh, comes out. Has to at some point. We know before yeah, the season right. starts it will. So Yeah, I mean, yeah. look, they, they've dragged it out to the point where now if they announce it's Turbo, everybody knew it was him three weeks ago, so they were like, hey, why didn't you just announce it when we all knew it? If it's somebody else, then it's like, well, it's not Turbo, so it's disappointing. Unless it's yeah. Cookser. That, like, like I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to that theory until they say it's not. That that that'd be amazing if it was Cookser. And uh, now that you said that, that is my new head cannon, and I'm gonna go make a Reddit post about it because everyone's been oh, having go, so much fun ahead. with those. So, somebody already did. They're like, hey, did Stax drop us a hint? Like I have inside <laughs> information on where Cookser or what is going on with the bricks or with NRG. Me of all people. Yeah, no, that, that's, <laughs> they that's closed that in that. a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> that's what like is great to see about esports as a whole and how it kind of emulates the, the whole sports scene is like when there are these roster rumors people just make the most outlandish things the, the greatest one i saw on there was garrett g people were saying oh garrett g's gonna be the third they're gonna clone him and make it Harrett h as okay. the uh, the new yeah. third member because he's played with them and won a land with them. you know you know what's funny about the, this whole thing like people are asking hey would this guy work would this guy work like look it's justin and garrett g a stuffed teddy bear would average half a goal a game with those two as teammates so i mean oh. you know that you put any you know rlcs starter caliber player they're gonna be good they're gonna be in the mix they you know fire burner is going to be replaceable there will be growing pains yeah, it, it's going to be a lot for them to work through, especially what we've seen happen with other rosters when they brought on new players. It took them a while to get used to the whole mix. We kind of saw that happen a little bit with G2, but then they were able to even out because Chicago is amazing. So yeah. they've been yeah. looking very well with him. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts about uh, any of the teams that might qualify through for Montreal through uh, the World Gaming Network? Do you think like maybe it's just gonna be uh, corrupted G's team because he's on one of the rosters that, too? That is an interesting roster, and yeah, they've already qualified for the finals of that, so they don't have to go through this closed qualifier this weekend. Yeah, that because that's corrupted G with Taroko and Mektos, two thirds of yeah. plot twist, and you know, okay, if corrupted G ends up with those two, then what happens with Plastics? Because now now that whole roster is completely obliterated. So that'll open up another rival series spot. So who knows? But uh, that is a team that I think very well could win that event. I, if I had to pick a team right now, only knowing four of the teams that are yeah. in it, that might be my team to win it because Taroko and Mektos are so good together. And you, know, you add a guy like Corrupted G who, look, I know Reto said he and classics are really slow during the uh the promotion tournament where yeah it was promotion but Reptig g is a nice veteran influence to have with those two players oh yeah and i think he'd really compliment them really well so I, i'm i'm really gonna have my eyes on that team uh that weekend in august yeah, it'll be great to see the the results that happen and come to, forward from that to see all the teams that will be competing at uh, DreamHack Montreal. Uh, we're just going to go through a quick wrap-up and a rewind of everything we've gone over today. For those who might not have caught everything, definitely go back and watch it once it's up on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash UGC. We also have Spotify that will eventually have the episodes on, and we will have our own website for the uh, audio portion of this too. But uh, we did have the great interview with Stax, talked about the kind of origins of him getting into casting and announcing, and also looking forward to what he could potentially be doing in the future as a caster, maybe just stay with the Rival Series. He says that's pretty fun. Talked about Beyond the Summit, Coaches at DreamHack, Energy's rebranding, ARG, Going to the moon, Monkey Moon joining them. Uh, SSG, finally we see Arsenal announced for that roster. A Rocket League poll, vote for it, as always. You know, it's kind of what we do here. Uh, ESL, Brazil, Premier League, we saw the teams that qualified from that. We also see all the teams that qualified for the World Gaming Network. Uh, closed qualifiers, talked about all the teams that made it through DreamHack Montreal. Not going to list them off, you can just go back and watch it. A lot of teams that made it that are great, going to do so well. Astronauts, they had their July 2019 schedule finish up. Summer Open this weekend, EU, sign up for it. Brawl Week 2, 
Also, EU, going to be great. Skirmish Invitational, not this week, but Noble won last week. And then we had the gauntlet with uh, Renegades just cleaning house as usual. Uh, any final thoughts or words or feelings or emotions that you want to tell the audience, Stacks, before we uh, close out the show for today? Uh, definitely watch as many of these, uh, I, I guess you want to say tier, you know, second or third tier uh, events, you know, the the minors and weeklies and monthlies as you can, because those guys are the future of this esport, and you never know when you're going to see someone who you barely remember from, like, the rival esports summer open popping off in the rival series and looking at them going, you know, if this guy leaves this RLCS team, I wouldn't mind having him take his place, you know, something like that. I, I, I think that the more awesome events we can run in this community, the better, and that Part of that is getting people to tune in and watch those. So, you know, keep your eyes on Liquipedia, the esports announcements uh, channel, and the uh, official Rocket League Discord, uh, any number of Twitter accounts. Uh, there is a lot more great, exciting Rocket League than you know of out there. So oh, yeah. go watch them. Go support them. Tons of great stuff going on. Speaking of great Rocket League, for those who are paying attention to the show live right now, there is the grand finals going on for uh, Team Beyond Nets Astro tournaments for the 2v2. Definitely check that out. They're tied. It's 3-3, three three, two minutes in overtime. Pretty solid stuff there. But as always, thank you for tuning in to Boost Pickup. I have been Vaudable and my guest star and co-host and what. Whatever you would love to call him, an amazing man. Uh, Sean Stackhouse Stacks has been a lovely person to have on the show. Thank you so much for being a part of it this week. And uh, that's all we really have for today's show. Tune in next time. Let us know if we have any information you'd like us to cover that hasn't been covered before. Some community events, some other stuff going on the next week. And as always, we love you guys so much and hope you enjoyed.